So I just kind of wanted to give a, a kind of brief overview on, on what we've been doing at Liquify in terms of our gateway and what we're open sourcing to um, for gateway providers. So we've kind of built um, multiple multiple sections to our gateway operator. We've got the front end, the back end. So front end for the portal. So it allows users to come in and create endpoints. You can manage endpoints, set usage limits, um, check analytics, invite people to your organization where they can, again, create um, additional endpoints, manage manage usage, delete endpoints, rotate keys, all that kind of nice stuff to do. So this is already live in beta. We've sent out a few invites already for people to use. A kind of fair bit of traffic coming through from from beta testers around about a million, two million calls per day. Um, we will got another about 20 or 30, which we're going to onboard probably tomorrow to, to test with. So if you haven't already, sign up and you can have a play around. So I'll kind of go into a, a bit more about the other tools we've built around this portal gateway. So we've got the API gateway, which has already gone live. Again, that, that's all open sourced. You can look at that, play around with that. So that kind of does all API key validation. So you, to, to hit our gateway, you're calling gateway forward slash API with a key in it, which is a 16 character uh, key. So this, this gateway basically just checks against MySQL uh, database, which gets updated from the portal backend when you generate keys, rotate keys. Uh, it then caches those keys and basically forwards that request onto the gateway server and does rate limiting analytics via Prometheus, which I haven't actually put on this um, diagram, as well as various other um, kind of quality of life uh, improvements. We can we can do retries and kind of dynamic routing and things from there. Or, you know, kind of all nice things to do. And again, that that metric stream is then picked up by the portal backend, which is what is displayed in in the analytics graphs that we have on our gateway. So we've got quite a lot of code, which is going to be coming to open source. and kind of show you what we've got in the closed source stuff, which is coming to open source probably tomorrow. We've still got a few um, small changes to do, mostly around variables and, and M files, because we've got a few hard coded stuff which we wanted to sort out. But yeah, we've been working quite hard on this the past few weeks. We've done quite a lot of commits to our um, back end and front end uh, to get this all ready for beta. So yeah, we're looking forward to opening it up to open source and kind of other developers or other community members looking at it and supporting us with, with development. And that's, yeah, it's kind of the high level of what we've been been looking at. Again, I forgot to mention the, uh, the portal back end. Um, it's quite a comprehensive API set. That's all I was going to show today. So yeah, if there's any questions, feel free. Uh, with with your uh, with all these components, uh, yeah. I I assume each one is like your back end and your front end are basically just kind of uh, independent containers. Um, Correct. Yeah. So it'll all just be a Docker compost that you can just spin okay. everything up with. Yeah, they, those Docker images are already built. They're already hosted on our on our Docker hub. So anyone can actually touch them at the minute if they want. Play around with them. It's just the code's not fully open source yet. And the uh, the back end, uh, I believe you 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 said was written in Python. Is that yeah. correct? Okay. Yeah, so it's a Python Flask app. Again, that's, like I said, there's quite a few different components, different APIs in here. Got it. And then this automatically, like these APIs, uh, I, I guess a number of them would then interface with Gateway Server. Is that correct? Uh, no. So this this. Backend is is purely to service the the front end portal as well as that API gateway. So the API gateway is what's talking directly to um, Gateway Server. Got it. And then uh, so so someone would deploy Gateway Server, it not not directly part of this deployment. Um, like they would deploy Gateway Server, and then uh, uh, and then I guess put in variables and things like that in in certain areas. Is there like a config file or something where you just kind of you know, point to your gateway server instance or anything like that? Yeah, so that's done. Um, there's a, an M file in, so you just basically update this M file, all they pass uh, in the variables into cool. the, the doc container. Awesome, awesome. We've made it, yeah, fairly simple. I kind of want it to just be a yeah Docker deploy that you just you pass in your environment variables and it should sort everything else for you. Hagadashi is asking if Liquify, is Liquify soloing siloing the current IAAS and pocket services. 
i.e. current IAS services don't back up to Pocket and Pocket Gateway won't back up your current services. Curious about hybrid solutions. Yeah, so, so currently the, the, the gateway beta that we've deployed is, is solely going through Pocket. Um, none of it's touching our, uh, our centralized infrastructure. And then we're also passing some of our existing traffic from clients um, to, to Gateway Server. We've got a inside that um, API gateway that I've got there. I don't know if I've pushed this release yet, but it's kind of got a hybrid um, routing built into that. So it can check latency based. So it can route traffic that we've got uh, either to Pocket or to us, depending on, on which gives best latency as well as retries. We can have it retrying to us. Uh, kind of like an uh, like an altruist kind of routing, but currently everything's going through um, Pocket Network via that gateway. One more question with uh, uh, with your current running of Gateway Server, did you dial in kind of specific QoS variables, uh, or because with with QoS and Gateway Server, you know you can set different variables on uh, you know how frequently the test happens and all that kind of jazz. Uh, did you kind of dial it in? Have you been dialing in those or have you kind of been operating off of a, kind of a default uh, default one and it's been working fine for you? How, how's that experience been? Yeah, currently we, we've just been using the default ones. For the, uh, a couple of variables we changed with mostly around timeouts. We need to be having a few timeouts on Solana mostly. Um, I think it was five seconds by default. So we played around with that. Uh, we've also uh, more or less finished the the coding now to have near support for the quality of service checking. Um, so that, that should go live probably next week once I've done a bit more testing on that. Andy, there is one more question for you in the chat if you want to. Uh, Dashi says, have current clients expressed interest in purely routing to Pocket or are most interested in Pocket? Most of them are kind of the hybrid. They want the highest uptime and, and also the lowest latency. So we've had a few people who were interested in more of a decentralized approach, but they still wanted that kind of backup of the the hybrid solution.